Hey everyone and welcome to Comic Breakdown. If you are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the content that we have coming out. And like promised, I am going to be dropping some issues that I have missed or I haven't covered yet. And there's actually quite a few of them that I've missed and haven't gone over, like Strange Adventures, we're missing a couple issues out of that one, and a couple of other lines. So today is going to be our X-Men catch-up day, if you will. And we're also going to be dropping a podcast episode later on today. So be sure that you've checked out Comic Breakdown and More podcast, available on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'll leave a link down in the description so you guys can check that out. We talk about all the latest comic book stuff, including movies, cinema all that fun stuff biggest news headlines for that week all that good stuff so go ahead and check that out now for today's issue we're going to be jumping into x-men's excalibur issue number 18 and if you haven't been keeping up with the excalibur line go ahead there's a link in my description you can check it out it'll get you completely caught up on everything excalibur related and with that being said let's dive into this issue. Alright guys, so picking up with this issue, we, we're shown the Starlight Citadel. And we see Saturn 9. And she, she looks very distraught. She just looks mad for some reason. And this is when she gets what seems to be a letter from Krakoa. Asking them to have a meeting. And her response is pretty much, you don't have a Captain Britain. So until you do have a Captain Britain to actually put your request through, we cannot have an audience with you. And then we pick up at the Braddock Lighthouse. And we see Rogue and Rachel sitting here having a conversation about Betsy because she's returned. At least that's what everybody's perception is right now. We can see Betsy. It looks like Betsy. She talks like Betsy. She has all the same memories as Betsy. So by all accounts, this is Betsy Braddock. This is Captain Britain. And this is where Rogue starts to show that she has some concern. You know, this is one of Rogue's oldest friends, and she's scared to death of her right now because she can't tell what she's thinking. And it, it quite possibly could be trauma. But Rogue feels like almost like she's possessed. And it's just weird how she randomly washed up two days ago. It's just seeming too coincidental for them. And Rogue suggests using telepathy to tap into her mind just a little bit deeper. But Betsy can overhear this and tells them that she'd, she'd rather them not do that. And this is when Rachel passes some psychic abilities onto Rogue. No, it's not permanent. It'll only last for a couple of days, but just a little something else to help her out. And this is when we see the arrival of Emma Frost, acting catty as ever, wondering why nobody was told about Betsy's arrival. And then she ushers herself down to Betsy and tells her that she's needed. But Betsy tells her she'd rather not talk and bids everybody adieu and takes off, goes to bed. And Emma Frost asks, what is wrong with her? And everybody's not sure. Rachel just seems to think that she's just upset. But those really close to her are starting to think that something's off. And this is when Emma Frost lets everybody know the council has determined a path regarding the permanent nature of Otherworld. Pretty much it's going to come down to either they work with Saturnine and mitigate everything, or they close the gate permanently. And Rogue offers to go talk to her... T talk to Saturnine personally, but they let her know that without a Captain Britain, she's not letting anybody have any kind of court or, t or time in front of her. And this is when we pick up just a little bit later. Everybody is sitting down having something to eat. And they have been trying very hard to get Betsy to just be a part of everything going on. But Betsy sits alone, idly sitting by all of the portals. And this is when her niece runs through one of the portals and takes off the other way, going in search for her brother, Captain Avalon. And he comes rushing in, demanding to know, first of all, why he wasn't told that his sister had been found, and where is she so he can talk to her. And this is when we pick up just a little bit later in another room, with Rogue and Captain Avalon having a discussion. And it's really Rogue just apologizing to him, because Betsy doesn't want to talk to anybody, not even her brother. And this is when they start to have the conversation, that it might not actually be Betsy Braddock. Because Captain Avalon, he knows his sister better than anybody out there. 
and Rogue is a close second when it comes to knowing her, and both of them feel like this is someone else. And after a little bit of back and forth on toying with the idea that, that this could be an imposter, Braddock excuses himself for the night and kind of just passes out in the seat. Now, unbeknown to Rogue as she exits the room is Betsy Braddock was watching them the whole time and she took control of her brother and it seems that she just sent him home because we see him going through the portal, walking past his guards, and that was it. And then Betsy telepathically connects to Rogue and tells her, Tag, you're it, as she hightails it through the Krakoan portal. Now, Rogue waking up quite confused on exactly what happened, but she does know that she was tagged in her sleep and that she went through the Krakoan portal. And so her and Richter decide to go searching, go looking for her, and Gambit, he gets his own little mission. He's headed out to go find Braddock to talk to King Jamie. And we see him come through the portal and he's met by the one and only King Jamie. And Gambit asks him if he's seen Captain Avalon. And this is where he has to break the news to also Jamie, letting him know, you know, Betsy has been found, but we're not even sure if it's actually Betsy. That's why we haven't told anybody. And then Jamie swears he didn't, he didn't make this Betsy. Like he didn't create her. He didn't have her cloned or created or anything like that, but he did have one made. So while he, he's claiming that he didn't create this one that, that's possibly wreaking havoc for them, he did create another Betsy just in case. And then we're taken to the Grove of Possibilities, where Rogue and Richter are going through a lot of Apocalypse's stuff in his little laboratory that he had set up here. And we're just learning that, you know, Richter really believes in a lot of Apocalypse's teachings. And the teachings that believe that, you know, jointly together, mutants can surpass just basic abilities and achieve what a lot perceive as magic. You know, take the five for example. The five are a prime example of mutants coming together and being able to have extraordinary feats. Now, we're taken to Castle Avalon. And as Jamie is making his way through his castle, we come to what looks like a, a almost prison, prison cell area. And on the table, tied up, is Morgan Lee Fay. And Gambit's, you know, he's kind of mortified by this. Like, why is she tied up here? Like, do you realize who her friends are on the outside? But Jamie swears that she's a security threat to the nation. And he ushers Gambit along. But Gambit's really, he's really, like, not comfortable or okay with, first of all, him having anybody tied up. And second of all, you know, women tied up in, in what seems to be more or less a dungeon. It just doesn't sit well with him. And Jamie tells him, you know, we can discuss that because it sounds like you want to make a deal. And I'm always down to make a deal, especially with somebody as talented as you are, Gambit. And this is when he shows him what looks to be some kind of ancient Egyptian tomb. And he lets him know this is where he's been storing his Betsy Braddock. No, it's, it's more of a lifeless body. It's just a, a shell of Betsy. But you never know when you're going to need a clone one, maybe to transfer consciousness somehow or, you know, whatever the case may be. And so he goes to open this to reveal his Betsy only for her to be gone. Nowhere in sight. And King Jamie's response is only, well, that was unexpected. And then we take it back over to Richter and Rogue. And as they're continuing going through all of this stuff, Rogue feels something, someone behind them. And out of the bushes comes Betsy Braddock, attacking at full speed. And Rogue really seems to be pulling punches here because Betsy gets the upper hand on her, gets on top of her and goes to, to about to impale her. But this is when we meet the arrival of Psylocke, telling Rogue that they need a more or a real psychic to watch her back before she gets herself killed. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I really, really did enjoy this issue. It was a lot of freaking fun. You know, they really have been killing it with most of the X-Men lines. The only one I'm not fond of and I'm not really covering on this channel has been New Mutants. Just because I do feel like that is more kid-oriented. And it just, I can't get into it. It doesn't pique my interest. But when it comes to the Excalibur lines, the X-Factor, the X-Force, the X-Men, Hellions, you know, all of these lines have been absolutely phenomenal. And I love the direction that we've taken uh, taken the X-Men in. We've really revamped them into a whole new thing. We've introduced them and in saying this is our new X-Men. This is who the X-Men are now. And I can only hope that we see some kind of iteration of this X-Men making its way into the cinema, into the MCU, and we're seeing, you know, crossovers. I've heard, you know, rumors of crossovers 
for WandaVision when it comes to Reed Richards and stuff like that. And so all of that will very easily bring everybody into the fold. But yeah, for this issue, it's it's really a lot of fun. You know, there's a lot of a lot of people in the comments said, you know, that's not Betsy Braddock. And they were 100% right. It's not Betsy. It's some kind of imposter put here more than likely by Saturnine herself. Just to kind of distort everything and throw a wrench into all of Krakoa's workings. Because she just doesn't like Krakoa. She doesn't like Jamie Braddock. She doesn't like Betsy Braddock. You know, so it makes sense that she would be the mastermind behind all of this. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, please do me the favor. Subscribe to the channel. Like this video. And until the next issue.